you're getting fancy, Comic Con. So I got my uh, professional uh, badge for Comic Con a couple days ago. I've seen, I've started seeing this pop up on uh, Twitter. You may have seen it. So um, used to be that they would. Um, You'd stand in line. I think I talked about this. Where you stand in line and you'd get, you bring that little printout of your confirmation. They'd scan it in, they, all that. They, you'd get your badge, but they sent it in the mail this time. And in this nifty little thing, full of stuff with the badge. I didn't get a guest badge this year because I didn't need it. But um, a little booklet, a pen, and. Uh, Something else. Um, so, yeah. Now, one more thing to remember not to forget when I go to Comic Con. Um, I had a question about um, breaking in, how I particular, in particular, broke in to uh, comics and specifically IDW. So I will uh, thought for today's installment of the vlog, I would just kind of answer that question. Um, the thing about breaking into comics is that no. Two people seem to do it the same way. Um, I know people that um, did a did. A, I know someone who did a commission years ago, uh, Randy Green in our studio, and I think he started on Witchblade. Uh, I don't. I remember if he was working on for Marvel before that or not. But he had done a, a pinup, and somebody took it to show the the people um, that were doing Witchblade. And Michael Turner was getting ready to leave. Is it Michael Turner? Yeah, getting ready to leave Witchblade. They saw his stuff. That's how he got the job. Um, I've never heard of anybody else doing that. Um, I know other people that have spent years and years and years trying to break in and then finally do. That's kind of my story. Um, so then you've got people, um, that were just super talented at 18 and walked in off the street and they got work. Um, a lot of different factors depends on the year, the decade that that was and, and stuff. But for me, um, I... I didn't uh, start really trying to buckle down and study art until my 20s. I mean, I was the kid always drawing in school, but I wasn't ever really focused on, hey, I need to learn anatomy and perspective and stuff and all that. I'm still learning. But uh, I, it never was a real um, conscious decision to do those things until you know I realized in my, my about you know, 21, 22, I was like, oh, okay, if I'm ever going to get better, I actually have to put some thought into it. So um, once I decided that... I still had a good 10 years of work ahead of me. Uh, I don't, I'm just, I don't know if I just, just the way I learned, it was a, a long process for me to get to the point where I could do stuff that just wasn't absolutely horrible. Now, if I look back at my stuff, um, I mean, from teenager on up to twenties, it's like every once in a while I'll come across a sketch and go, well, that actually wasn't bad. Um, but it was that consistently of consistency of knowing why that wasn't bad and being able to do quality work as a norm, as opposed to, blind squirrel finding a nut and all that. Um, so I was drawing uh, a creator-owned book called Gravy Boy. It was a story about a uh, kid who was supposed to get the um, power to manipulate gravity at will, but through a mistake gets the power to manipulate gravy. And me and my friend Marty Blevins, who wrote it, did uh, about four issues. And we tried to self-publish, and we, went we submitted it to Diamond, and we're going to publish Diamond, rejected it. Uh, we had another... Um, distributor through Hastings. So it was in some bookstores. Um, but when Diamond basically rejected it, it kind of killed the project. I mean, that's, I, I still get people that occasionally ask me about that. That's kind of what happened. It kind of, um, at the time and, and the quality too, wasn't great. I mean, I look at it now and I cringe. I, I want to redraw all that stuff. I may actually revisit the character and do other stories and some of actually talking uh, just to a friend of mine about doing a video, like movie trailer for it and stuff. Uh, like a mock movie trailer thing. So I was doing that book, and I, that kind of got me connected with some of the local artists uh, here in town, um, like Rick Ketchum, uh, John Wyckoff, all the guys, in, and Randy Green, all the guys in Tsunami Studios, um, who were, uh, and there's something about this area of North Carolina, there just seems to be a lot of comic book creators. Uh, Michael Ringo was in... Um, T closer towards Raleigh, but not too far down the road. So there was a, a community of, of artists, and uh, I got to know them. Eventually, Rick would ask me to come up. They had a physical studio space back in the day, um, and it was downtown. I went up, and I, I just started hanging around there because Rick, Rick would invited me up, and I would start working there. And eventually, I got to the point where I joined the studio, 
and just being in an environment with professional artists who you can bounce stuff off even just watching what they're doing there would be you know pages like i remember there were several spider-man pages laying around you i would always see for some reason and um actually i have one of them here i should have if i knew i was gonna mention it i would have pulled it out but uh just just being in an environment where that high quality work is laying around and you can just look at it and study it and uh eventually rick would ask me to work uh do some background inking to help him catch up on something and then eventually it would be like here can you ink this page i'm behind and in a community of artists and inkers they, when they get behind sometimes they'll kind of ghost out pages um it's been a while since i've had to do that but sometimes it's still an option with the studio um so i was doing that and because of that uh some of the guys were doing i think it was actually kelly yates was doing in our studio was doing a doctor who miniseries that was the first thing that I, I inked just ink no yeah okay he did an issue and I inked part of it and then he did in 2011 a or 2010 or 11 a um, miniseries fairy tale life and I was inking it and he couldn't finish the last two issues so I ended up penciling and inking um, the last two issues and that was kind of my first real um, uh, IDW work uh, and through that process you know I was kind of being Giving a lot of good advice from uh, Rick Ketchum, who had been around for, and he passed away sadly to, about two years ago. Uh, but he had been working for Marvel and stuff, and he kind of knew just how he approached getting work and talking to editors and things. Um, so after I finished that, I got like a, my first GI Joe inking job, uh, and I was working at Starbucks. So what I was doing for a living that whole time was a whole different story. Like I, I out of college, I worked at an audiovisual company, and then I'm um, taught history in high school for a couple of years. And then, then I decided when I decided I really wanted to move in the art direction, I got a job at Starbucks part-time for almost five years while I was trying to break into comics. So I would get up at four in the morning and go up in Starbucks, work there till 10 then go into the studio, take a nap and then work again. And I didn't have kids then, so I could do that. Um, but that, I kind of, once I started getting a little professional work, it was kind of like, I, know, I knew it was the right moment to, if I was ever going to try to make a living doing art, then I should probably do it then. So I took the leap. I had an issue coming in. I, I remember I was in the um, hospital room waiting on my son to be born because we were in there 24 hours with a page of G.I. Joe inking it. <laughs> I mean, when you're there 24 hours and you're just kind of sitting around, I, um, that seems ridiculous to me now, but I did. Um, when you're when you're coming off of a uh, just having quit your your <laughs> your part time job with a huge career change to becoming self employed and all of a sudden you're waiting on your kid to be born yeah you're, you're gonna work while you're waiting for your kid to be born um, so right after that I went through six months with no work which was pretty stressful that was 2012 and um, then I got on some transformer stuff and then GI Joe and then when I landed on GI Joe with IDW um, I've been there ever since and that's been five years ago but when was it 2011 was it six years six years ago so that's kind of my little way that I broke in and there's a lot of factors you couldn't really I couldn't replicate again you know I, I you put in the work of doing your creator own stuff uh, you know make some comics work to get better uh, make yourself um, Go to conventions and, and just be in the air the, around creators, right? And then eventually you forge relationships. And for me, I happened to be in a place where there was a local studio that I eventually joined and was kind of mentored there and just had some opportunities. So you couldn't really replicate that now because that studio is physical. I mean, we're still a studio that's set up at shows, but we don't have a physical studio space and everything. All the dynamics are different. Comics are different. Um, so that's kind of how I got in. But my story is, again, if you ask 10 comic book artist how you broke in you'd probably get 11 different stories um because it's just a weird thing it's not like you know you what's on you is if you're going to break in i think i say that a lot in this vlog i think because um again my my experience is is just me and a few people i know but i i think that what is up to you i know is up to you is to get better do projects uh and be patient and get out and go, uh, even if you're, you know, not a big, and I'm not like, I, I have, I've, networking doesn't come easily. I'm an introvert. Um, and, um, I've said before, 
I just keep showing up. So that's one of the things. Be nice, be friendly. You don't have to be like the perfect social butterfly, but just put yourself in a position, even though you're uncomfortable, to, if you are that type of person, that you you can, can keep showing up in those situations and just be friendly and uh, work to get better. And eventually, you'll start to make a little headway. As far as the time frame, how long that takes, I have no idea. It took me, uh, from the first time I ever showed my stuff to an editor, to the time I was ever paid to do a comic was eight years. So now part of that is just me needing to grow as an artist. So if you can get better as an artist, that for you will be uh, quicker. So I recommend that. The younger you get started, the quicker you'll get work. <laughs> so um, I think that's my biggest handicap for me and just starting the career and um, uh, was being late into buckling down. Um, so, you know, I, I became a professional artist in my th 30s. I'm 41 now, so maybe this is, I don't know. Not re I don't know if I had much of a career doing that <laughs> before this, but uh, it came, came kind of later for me than some other people. But anyway, um, just answering that question, this is the vlog, uh, depending on when you watch this. Uh, it may be after July 4th for you, but it is July 4th weekend, so there will not be a vlog or a video on July 4th, um, and nor will there be a live drawing video that day, because it's a holiday, it's my nephew's birthday, and my son will be here in the house, and that's impossible to get anything done when he's here. So, uh, I will catch you all on Monday, or whenever you watch this. You could watch this on Monday. If that's the case, there'll be another vlog coming. Anyway, like and subscribe down there in the corner, and uh, have a good one.